choice of two trails. Hi, I'm Trisha from Nature Lover Canada and today we are at Charleston Lake Provincial Park. We are here for seven nights and we're hoping to check all the trails, do some canoeing and do some relaxation. So this morning, our first morning here, we arrived yesterday afternoon and set up the tent and the, the not the tent, old habits, set up the trailer and the tarps and everything that we needed for that. So this morning we are going to first go on Beechwood Trail, Beechwood's Trail. This is a 1.8 kilometer loop. No bicycles and your doggy can come as long as it's sitting in on a leash. What? That's what the, that's what the little symbol basically has is a sitting dog, a person standing beside the dog and a leash. So, but no, dogs are allowed on this trail. So this is our sixth park of our eight park, 26 day camping trip, 2019. We are still alive and we are still on the go. It's a lovely morning. It's supposed to get hot today, so 38 degrees Celsius with humidity possibility of rain and thunderstorms so we are getting out while we can so we're up on a ridge and below us down there is the road spotted salamanders oh that's a nice sign what are they talking about how different animals live in different parts of the forest first floor seeing salamanders, chipmunks, and some birds like the oven bird. So I'm anticipating the farther we go in, next they're going to tell us what's in the understory, and then what's up in the canopy. Let's see if I'm right. A little, not a little, a very large dead tree with a variety of woodpecker holes in it. It goes all the way up to the top of this very large tree. So I guess there's woodpeckers around here. <laughs> Safe bet. ostrich fern. A bunch of different ferns in here. Makes you want to learn them. Beautiful filtered light. A little bit of a breeze. Bugs aren't too bad, but then again, we are wearing some DEET insect repellent, which we really prefer not to, but like Chitra said, she's already had a tick on her, so it's kind of imperative nowadays to protect yourself. <laughs> oh, that, is that... to Mallory Town. <laughs> what are you, the little gingerbread? Yes. Gingy? You're gingy? Okay, I haven't watched Shrek enough to know. That looked like an inside joke, so... Why are you Pinocchio? <laughs> okay. Ooh. Obviously, I'm not an adult because I don't get it. Maybe, maybe later she'll tell me. Very important, eh, Clo-Clo? Bet your mama has something. Species are species that a lot of other species depend on. So the yellow-bellied sapsucker is a keystone species. 
because its cavity nests become homes for many other birds and mammals, and it drills sap wells in trees to feed on the sap, and other animals feed from their sap holes. <laughs> True that. Sap holes. They have flying squirrels here. Cool. But they're nocturnal. Of course. So you won't be seeing them during the day. <sighs> they also have red-shouldered hawks here. Red-shouldered hawks? And secretive while nesting. Mm. What do you think about that, Chloe? Uh-huh. What do you think? They're sneaky buggers. Oh. If you can't hear this in England. <laughs> So she, here's the next thing, and as we predicted, look at that. There's the under understory. So we already did the forest floor, the understory. You we're talking about red-shouldered hawks, flying squirrels, and yelly, yelly, yellow, yellow-bellied sapsuckers. <gasps> I wonder what's going to be next. I wonder. Isn't that lovely? You can hear the cicadas in the background. And the breeze. Beautiful sound of the breeze. We're going to come up into a pine grove in a minute, according to the beginning map. And they said there are a few hemlocks. I see a hemlock way out in the distance right now. Um, but I was just going to show you that. Look how cool that is. Yeah. Okay, get out of the way. Let's give a little view of the forest floor. Imagine if you were a chipmunk. Oh, if you were a chipmunk, you'd have to be down like this. And then you'd probably go up a tree. If I had a drone, I could show you how you would be if you were a red-shouldered hawk. But I don't. I guess I could just throw my camera through the air. But then, then that would be the end of the video. A McDonald's? Ooh. Very shaggy and barky. Look at it. You see that? See how shaggy the bark is? Had a good, better look? And it kind of just is coming off in pieces over here. Isn't that fascinating? It's a beautiful tree, very unique. So Chitra usually goes ahead of me for several reasons. One, because the dog wants to go ahead and, you know, see what she sees. Two, because if it's earlier in the morning, she gets rid of all the spider webs that go along the trail. <laughs> and three, she gets to spot all the things and wait for me to show them to me. So very handy having another person with you. Definitely don't take somebody shorter with shorter than you to go first though, because then you're still going to have to go through all the spider webs. You have to think about these things. You go up a hill, you have to go down a hill. It's a slopey little hill. Oh yeah. See any um, bear marks? People marks. So the the smooth trees over there were actually even the one in the middle, except it's damaged, injured, are a stand of beech trees. It's quite a few in this little area. Chitra was mentioning in another video that. It takes at least 30 years for a beech tree to be mature enough to start producing their seeds, which are called beech nuts. And black bears um, use beech 
nuts as um, a very good source of proteins and oils and nutrients and stuff like that. So it's an important source of food for black bears in Ontario. Okay, so they say there are a lot of porcupines at the tops of these trees. Oh, sleeping and feeding. Scarlet tanagers, which are way at the top as well. Very hard to spot. Right. Hidden, hidden in the leaves. They like to eat the insects at the top of the trees. And the dog day cicada. The dog day cicada. Okay. Yes, males make the loudest droning sound broadcasted widely from high up in the trees. Only the males of this species call from mid-July into September in order to attract females. This is their size here. See my finger? So it's like a finger joint and a half. That's how big they are. Hmm. I, I didn't realize, well, I guess I should have realized there were different types of cicadas. Dog day cicada. Hmm. We heard them earlier on the trail. It's handy to know something before you start talking about it. <laughs> you know what they say about a little bit of knowledge. that came up through the tree or the tree that went around the corner. It grew around a piece of rock. <clears throat> because trees are versatile and they adapt. We should be all more like trees. Strong and sturdy but willing to be flexible at the same time. little philosophy in your nature trail today. Oh, we got a deer fly singing to me. You know it's good to wear a hat when Chitra wears one because she does not like to wear hats. It's very quiet back here. Not hearing a lot of birds or we're also not hearing a lot of road sounds or motor motors or engines so it's hard to get out here earlier in the day when our dog won't get up early enough such a lazy little fox sound she is little Alvar. Huh? We got a little Alvar? Yeah. There are here. What? Yeah. Now we're in a forest clearing. It says they're a good place for butterflies because of the sun of course. Meadowhawks which is a type of dragonfly and rats, rat snakes not rattlesnakes. Oh, okay. Her. Were they? Yeah. But every time she shook her head, they all flew away. Pretty good at it. Pretty easy to follow this trail with, with the path alone, but it is well marked as well. See the little blue trail markers and a couple of arrows to make sure that you make the turns. It's not very long, it's not very difficult. Wouldn't be good for anyone who needs to be in a stroller or a wheelchair or anything like that but I think it would still be good for for younger kids and anybody who's able to do a little bit of an incline and a little bit of a decline and navigate over some rocks and roots it's very soft so it's good on the knees my feet and knees are pretty happy about these kinds of trails You look very pretty in the sunlight. So 
So that's the first trail that we've completed at Charleston Lake. We are now going to head on to another one, but I'm not going to videotape that today. I'm going to actually photograph it, trying to have a little bit of balance between what I video and what I photograph, since I am a photographer first and foremost. So hopefully we'll get back to the next trails and have a nice selection of videos for you from Charleston Lake. First impressions, it's a smaller park, but it's very nice. It feels very natural and you don't feel like you're just in, you know, outside of a town that comes with its own issues if you want, if you need Wi-Fi or cell service. We're on Virgin Mobile and we don't have any cell service here again, just like in Bon Echo. So if cell service is important, you either need to get a SIM card or you're going to have to go out of the park. So once again, that's the Beechwoods Trails at Charleston Lake, 1.8 kilometers. It was very lovely. We're going to do it again um, on another day, but photograph it instead. And we're going to head to the next trail which hopefully will be in the playlist linked up in the right hand corner. Don't forget to check out all of our other videos from this 26 day camping trip and subscribe. New videos every Thursday. Once we get enough subscribers, we're hoping to go up to two videos a, a week and that'll give me an excuse to get out more. So thanks again. I am Tricia from Nature Lover Canada. See you out there.